Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. This is a second part of a two-part video looking at periodicity and bonding and structure in the periodic table. In the last video, we looked at giant metallic structures. In this video, we'll be looking at giant covalent structures and simple molecular structures. I'm showing you here the periodic table. As we've seen, elements on the left of the periodic table are metals. For example, in period 2, we have the metals lithium and beryllium. Metals tend to have relatively high melting and boiling points, and as we saw in the last video, this is due to the electrostatic attraction between the delocalized electrons and the metal cations in the giant metallic lattice, and scientists call this metallic bonding. I'm showing you here the approximate melting points of all of the elements in period 2. As we've seen, lithium and beryllium have high melting points due to the metallic bonding in their giant metallic lattices. The next two elements in period 2 are the metalloid boron and the non-metal carbon. Both boron and carbon have very high melting points, and this is because they form giant covalent structures. In a giant covalent structure, billions of atoms are joined by strong covalent bonds, and together these atoms form a giant covalent lattice. It takes a great deal of energy to break all of the covalent bonds in a giant covalent lattice. And this explains why giant covalent structures have high melting and boiling points. Now, boron forms a number of different giant covalent structures, which you're not required to know. We're going to look at the giant covalent structures of carbon. Carbon is in group 4 and has 4 electrons in its outer electron shell. Now, in order to achieve a full outer electron shell, carbon atoms can covalently bond to 4 other carbon atoms like this. By doing this, the carbon atoms have formed a giant covalent lattice. When this takes place, the carbon has formed diamond. I'm showing you the structure of diamond here. In diamond, the atoms are arranged in a tetrahedral structure with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Now, giant covalent lattices like diamond have three key properties. As we've seen, they have a high melting and boiling point due to the large amount of energy required to break the covalent bonds. Diamond does not conduct electricity. That's because every electron is in a covalent bond, and there are no delocalized electrons to act as charge carriers. And finally, giant covalent lattices are insoluble. This is because solvents cannot disrupt the large number of strong covalent bonds. Now, instead of forming four covalent bonds, as in diamond, Carbon atoms can form three covalent bonds, and in this case the carbon atoms have formed graphite. In graphite, the carbon atoms form layers of planar hexagonal structures with a bond angle of 120 degrees. One electron from each carbon atom is delocalized and can act as a mobile charge carrier. And because of these delocalized electrons, graphite is a good conductor of electricity. Now a single layer of graphite is called graphene, and because of its delocalized electrons, graphene is also a good conductor of electricity. Ok, now after carbon, the melting point of the elements in period 2 drops very sharply. Nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine all consist of diatomic molecules and are gases at room temperature. Neon is a noble gas consisting of individual neon atoms. Now, if we cool these elements down to a solid form, they form a simple molecular lattice with weak intermolecular forces between the molecules. These weak intermolecular forces do not require a lot of energy to break, which is why these elements all have low melting and boiling points. So, the changes in melting points across period 2 are due to structure and bonding. We have giant metallic structures, giant covalent structures, and finally, simple molecular structures. Now, we can see a similar pattern in period 3. Sodium, magnesium and aluminium form giant metallic structures. Silicon forms a giant covalent structure. Phosphorus, sulphur and chlorine form simple molecular structures with weak intermolecular forces. Phosphorus forms the molecule P4, and sulphur forms the molecule S8. These are both solids at room temperature. Chlorine gas forms the diatomic molecule Cl2. And finally, argon is a noble gas consisting of individual argon atoms. 
In the next video, we'll start looking at the elements in group 2.